this is Andy Tube. This video, I'm going to show you how to remove, replace, and adjust the height of a needle bar on a Singer Model 327K. This is the Spartan version. This video will also work for the 328, the sister machine, 329, and a couple, three dozen uh, other Singer machines. Um, to begin the process of it, you need to remove the face cover uh, or the nose cover that's here. Uh, my machine is just held on by a thumb screw, so I took that off. And I also took off the top arm cover. And on mine, there's two screws here, one, one near the spool pin and one in the middle of the arm cover. And though I loosened those two screws and um, pulled pulled the arm cover off, because we have to take the needle out the top of the machine. Okay, so once we get once once we get that exposed here, we can see the area better here. Get some get some light set up. So the needle bar uh, is held in place by a clamping screw that's in a, a, a piece called a needle bar connecting link because it connects back to the take up linkage that uh, when, the, when the arm when the hand wheel moves and the upper arm rotates and that linkage goes up and down that counterbalance in there this connecting link is connected to that <laughs> And that's what makes the needle bar go up and down. So, uh, on this machine, it's very uh, easy to see there. The con uh, connecting screw is right dead center in the front. S some of them you would you would access from the side over here, but uh, would just go right in there with a, f a straight screwdriver and give that uh, set screw a turn uh, and you can see now my needle bar is not clamped right it's loose now uh, if 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 you found the machine or uh, a family member gave you an old machine you know grandma's machine that's been sitting around for years uh, you can expect the needle bar and the clamping area and the needle clamp or needle holder down here to be all gum up, gummed up and, and stuck with decades old dried oil. So you, you may not slide like this, okay? <laughs> so if you loosen the clamping screw and it won't move like this, uh, my advice is to take the take this this clamping screw all the way out just take it out and then spray in there some degreaser like uh, the crud cutter cleaner and degreaser I use or I usually for this will spray a little penetrating oil like WD-40 to start eating up and softening that uh, it's stuck and you don't want to force it you can try and twist it loose a little bit often what works very well is to uh, heat the area up with a hair dryer not much you can hurt in there and uh, soften that up but you you don't really want to be pounding very much with a mallet or anything on that needle bar because the, the top half of it is hollow and it can bend. The other thing that we, we need to do because we have to pull the needle bar up is we have to remove that uh, needle clamp and the needle holder whatever you want to call it there. Okay. And on this model it's the same thing it has one screw that screws through the top of the needle holder and screws right into the needle bar. 
and this area too can be all gummed up and the whole needle bar can be stuck for that matter inside the needle bar bushing and it's usually the bottom bushing in the needle bar frame I'll show you here in a in a minute oh this this screw has a little cup washer around it so the thread doesn't get stuck in there See that little washer when you screw it in it covers up the head of the screw so this is the vibrating bracket on a zigzag machine that connects up to the camp stack and what makes the needle rock back and forth to make your zigzag so at the top of it there's a bushing and at the bottom is a bigger bushing and other machines just have the the single big bushing here and this is the one that can get quite fouled up because this is where you always oil and uh, the oil just gets inside there and at the top and settles down to the bottom and comes all the way down here and dries. That's what's called varnishing and over years even a high quality sewing machine oil can varnish and just dry out and get very hard. So if you have that uh, you can try alcohol, it's slower. You can use crud cutter, cleaner and degreaser, you see in my videos to, to loosen that. You can use uh, WD-40 or any, uh, um, I used some 3-in-1 penetrating oil one time, you know, that's just going to get in there and soften. You can put some kerosene, uh, things like that. Once, once you have the needle bar moving and you have this uh, clamp, uh, the screw that holds the needle clamp on here, see if I can get up here without blocking too much. I'm going to turn this little thumb screw out a little bit from the needle bar so I can get this. The needle clamp should slide off the bottom of the needle bar. There we go. So, then, we'll just push this right up, and if it doesn't want to slide up in those bushings, you, you can clean the needle bar in place, uh, rubbing it with a cloth and your cleaner. You'd be surprised. It's a very close tolerance in there, so any dried up debris can block movement. Okay, I think you got the message for that, so... We'll just slide that up and uh, twist it a little bit and keep pulling up. You can rotate that hand wheel to move that ping piece and the connecting link down a little bit. See? Come on up here, guy. Yep, here we go. Whew! Okay, so, how about that? There's, there's the needle bar for the 327K. Uh, some needle bars have a small piece in here. It looks like half a hockey puck or similar. That's called a, a jib. You don't want to lose that. You need that to clamp onto the needle. This particular model does not have a jib in there. So once you get the needle bar out, you are home free. Now one thing I want to show you while I got it up close here is that there's two bands cut into the steel all the way around the needle bar. And I'm hoping you can see them. in the video here. They're not showing up that well in my camera, but those two bands that are cut in there are called timing marks. And when the needle's in a vertical position, there's an upper and a lower timing mark. Okay. The upper one is for setting the height of the needle, and the lower one is for setting the timing of 
the needle bar and needle to the hook. So I'm going to be mentioning that later when I set the height. So I want you to, to see what I'm talking about. Uh, once that once that is out of there and if you if you took it out to clean it you know you can put a cleaner on a, on a small uh, bottle brush type of thing and get it up in here um, this connecting link on most machines is going to come right out now it just kind of floats in there and the needle bars through the bushings right so without the needle bar you can pull it right out so you see it's kind of hinged there it's got a little pin holding those two pieces together and don't don't lose that pin I had a couple models where that pin was was very loose and when I pulled this out it uh, boy is this tight me eh? this needs a good cleaning so yeah see all that dark varnished oil anyway uh, you, you can clean it you can get your cleaner in here with a brush or cotton buds and so forth and get the dried oil out of the bushing okay but for whatever the reason you took it off when you want to put it back on it just goes in reverse you need to put your connecting link back in here there's just a little uh, piece that rotates and comes out from the take up lever linkage and you'll see it when you pull this out you'll see it's just like a cube with a hole in it for this Okay. So you got to put that back in there first, and I got mine kind of low there. Let me let me move this. I'll turn the hand wheel and get that back up a little bit. Then we're going to put our needle bar bar back in from the top, and it's got to go through the top bushing through the connecting link and then down through the bottom bushing okay so uh, when you have this all cleaned up it usually goes pretty easy uh, there we go ta-da okay and then I will want to put my uh, needle holder or needle clamp back on to the bottom here. Now when you when you take a needle bar out or loosen it and turn it or whatever, when you put it back in there's kind of two two functions. Um, one you're going to have to set the height and when you're going to have to align the needle bar the needle holder up with the feed dog because this this can't be twisted right because you have a hole in the needle and your thread going through and if you put it in crooked the hook is going to miss that the loop of thread when it comes around so we have it back in our bushings now. I'm just going to get this, uh, or attempt to get this. Uh, I'm going to turn it sideways so I can see it here and kind of line up the hole in the needle bar. Hey. Okay, so I, I was having a hard time getting that started because I'm standing up and I'm leaning over the camera and stuff. So, I, I didn't need you to watch me for five or ten minutes fiddling around with that. So I got it started and I'm going to tighten it up here. And I'll tighten that all the way. That That needs to be nice and firm and securely tightened to the needle bar okay 
then I'm going to put my um, clamping screw back in but I'm not going to tighten it completely I just want to I just want to get it in there and kind of firm because I, I don't want the needle bar to slip up and down on me while I'm working on this you know but I don't want it so tight that I can't manipulate the needle bar a little see how I can turn it and it stays where I turn it because I have to line this up with the front of the machine right well, it's, wanting, it's wanting to creep down a little bit on me so I'll just get in there and snug that up just a little bit more so I can still wiggle it and move it up and down there we go okay so I have it Kind of temporarily reinstalled but now I have to set that whole height thing right I have to set the height so to do this I'm going to turn the hand wheel towards the front of the machine until my clamping screw is as low to the bushing as it's going to go so I'll turn it down 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 See, it's kind of bottomed out if I keep turning it comes back up so just want to get it down to the low spot. Okay. Now, let me put something under here to make sure you can still kind of see that. Yeah. So this is where I'm going to do the two the two things. Now I'm going to set the height, but I'm also going to turn the needle bar so that the needle clamp and all, all I do is line up the flat face with the line of the mm, needle plate usually uh, eyeballing it is enough but when this is all the way down that top timing mark I showed you should be just barely visible up here at the bottom of the bushing you need to see that top mark but it has to be uh, real close up to the bushing and that's that's how you will set the height of the needle bar and I'm about a quarter inch too low so I'm going to just wiggle this needle bar up. I'm going to get down so I can look up at it and see it real good. So I got this little sliver of silver showing between that top timing mark and the bottom of the bushing. Now I turn my needle bar a little bit. So let me turn it back to line up with the front. Oop, my needle bar came down a little bit. Okay. So maybe if I tighten this up a little bit more, made it a little bit harder to turn. Now that I got it so close. Whoop, I, I tightened it up too much. Oh, come on, go up and it, it'll turn a little bit, but it doesn't want to go up. I'm a little bit too low. So let me get my correct tip on my screwdriver. So when I do get it there, I can hold it in place. Right? And I can tighten it up. So I'm going to turn this just a little so I can get to the side of the camera there. Got to make sure my clamping screw is all the way down which means the needle bar is at the low spot okay I got it just a little too tight go loosen that clamping screw get it up in there I'm gonna have to hold it in place and line it up with my needle plate and the timing mark and then I'm gonna go in here and tighten that up 
Now I know from experience I'm not, oops, sorry, I'm not going to tighten it 100% because if I'm off I'm just going to have to loosen it. But let's first look, yeah, see it slipped down just a little. Okay. So I go in here. Now you know all this fiddling around, you're not going to have to do all this because you're not going to be working around the camera and standing up and leaning over and all that. You can just put this right on your workbench or your or your table, your desk, whatever you're working on, and you can get that top timing mark right up where you want it. Oh, right there. And then you can line up the edge of that, line it up with the edge of your needle plate. Give it a pretty good tighten and check. Wow, that's good. Now I've got it. Now my timing mark is just barely visible. And I just turn that just a smidge. My needle clamp, there we go. It's lined up parallel like that. So now I can finish tightening that up. It's got to be very firm. I mean, you, you don't want to squeeze it so hard it puts a dent in the needle bar. Because <laughs> then you won't get it back out. You know, but it's got to be nice and firm. Because the needle bar does a lot of work with every stroke, right? So, let's check it out here. Very, very nice. Mm -hmm. Go down all the way, double check my height. Very good. Okay. Now, I had removed my uh, presser bar and presser foot, but there, there would be a little test that you can, you can do here. If you have your presser bar in here, you, you lift up your presser bar lever to raise your presser foot, and you lower that clamping screw or needle bar as low as it will go, and the, and the presser foot and the bottom of the uh, needle clamp cannot touch. You don't want them hitting. You don't want them to touch. So if you lift your presser foot and lower your needle bar and the presser foot and needle clamp are touching, if you can't slide a little piece of copy paper between the two or see some daylight, that means your needle bar is too low or your presser bar is too high. But if you if you set those to the specs I give you my videos, you'll be okay. That is how to remove, install, and set the height of the needle bar on a Singer 327K and many other machines. Mm -hmm. And uh, every Singer machine I worked on has those two timing marks. Um, I had a commenter one time tell me on a machine that was only about 10 years old that I, th I think she said she had three timing marks and, and I don't know how to set those. I've never done that. But on the two timing marks, that top one for needle height, that's how to do it. The bottom one, as I mentioned, is to set the hook timing. And uh, that'll be my next video if you want to learn how to uh, check and set or reset the hook point to needle point timing on this machine. If you already know how to do that, I have about 440 other videos on my channel that you could browse through. Thanks for watching this one, though. And comments, everything is welcome. Subscribe if you like to. But I hope you'll have time in the future to come back and see another AndyTube video. Take care.